and then, and then as soon as we went through that little that little interaction, that little exercise, I'm I'm telling you, not exaggerating. She looked up at me. No, but you want to do the move? Like, I mean, like it was like she literally forgot what she was sweating because I validated and affirmed her emotions. So that little five-year-old felt seen, heard, and understood. It removed the emotional blockage and allowed her to get back to focus on doing jujitsu. Welcome to the EQ Gangster Podcast, where you will learn practical tools to grow your mental and emotional health and intelligence to be the best version of yourself, both at work and at home. It is real, raw, and transformational. The journey of emotional growth isn't easy, but it's worth it. I believe in you. This episode is sponsored by Classical Conversations. Since 1997, Classical Conversations has been equipping families like yours with the resources to homeschool with confidence following a classical curriculum rooted in a Christ-centered worldview alongside other families in a local community. Homeschooling is doable with Classical Conversations. Check out classicalconversations.com forward slash Gibbons for more information. Again, that's classicalconversations.com forward slash Gibbons, G I. B B E N S. EQ Gangsters. What's up? Okay, so this one is a really fascinating story about helping a five year old get unstuck emotionally. The the story is, is about a, a five year old, but the principle applies to adults as well. <clears throat> it was just an, an be honest with you, it was one of the most visceral reactions to some EQ principles that I've ever seen, like in real life. It was super fascinating. We have some family friends that are doing, you know, they're they're trying out jujitsu because, you know, that's, I talk about jujitsu a little bit. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed that. And, and so this family, and they've got a, a truckload of kids, just a, <laughs> these adorable kids. So, and it's like their first exposure to jujitsu. And sometimes instructors are, are like, remember what it's like being brand new, and some don't. And me, just I'm, I'm hypersensitive to the new people and their experience with really doing anything new, but especially jujitsu. So I got there after the kids class had already started and I'm like, Oh sweet. The family's here. You know, this, this family friends of ours, there are the kids are already in the class and little kids and stuff. And so I'm like, Oh man, let me, let me get my, my, you know, no gi outfit on, and then let me jump out there with it with the little kids because I love hanging out with these little kids. And you know, I, and I love every single one of them. The youngest is like has me wrapped around her finger, wrapped, and I and she knows it. And she is 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 like kind of being non-participatory and you know and i'm like hey sweetie like you know you know you want to try this move out you know because the instructor would demonstrate the move and then have the you know then all the kids would go and 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 practice it and you know so i asked this little girl i said hey you you know you want hey if you want to she you know you could try it out on me and and she's kind of being real sheepish and I'm like, and normally she's kind of spunky and stuff. So I'm like, okay, something, something's off. 
but I'm still not dialed in yet to what's going on because I just got on the mat with her. And so I said, I said, hey, sweetie, are you, are you okay? She's like, well, I'm, I'm a little scared. I'm like, it wasn't a scary move or anything. So was, I'm like, okay. I'm like, what? Like, you can do it on me. Like, you don't have to be scared to put the move on me, sweetie. Like, go ahead and, you know, try it out. And she's like, oh, she's still being real sheepish. And it's just not like her. And I said, so then I'm like, okay. So I'm slowly, again, my social awareness is slowly kicking in. I'm like, I'm like, hey, sweetie, like, what, what, what are you, like, what else is going on? Is there something else going on? And then she said, well, there were two little girls over there in the class that they both looked at me and started laughing at me. And I said, ah, I said, I said, how did that make you feel? I said, did that make you feel sad? And she said, yeah. I said, did that make you feel probably a little upset and disappointed? Yeah. And maybe even a little angry? Yeah. And I know she you know, may or may not have understood all the, those different words and stuff. And, but I'm helping her give her and her, her brain, I'm helping her label these emotions. And, and, and so what was fascinating is, and I said, I said, well, sweetie, I, I mean, I, I totally understand that would be, that would be very, you know, that'd be very frustrating. And, and and I would be sad too. And, and and I would probably feel a little embarrassed and it would make me probably feel uncomfortable and frustrated and upset and disappointed. And, th and then as soon as we went through that little, that little interaction, that little exercise, I'm, I'm telling you, not exaggerating. She looked up at me. No, but you want to do the move? Like, I mean, like, it was like she literally forgot what she was sweating because I validated and affirmed her emotions. So that little five-year-old felt seen, heard, and understood. It removed the emotional blockage and allowed her to get back to focus on doing jujitsu. And so many times, I, I don't even want to think about how many times I'm like, hey, to friends or family members or my wife or our daughter or, you know, colleagues. Oh, hey, don't worry about it. Hey, just suck it up. Hey, don't, you know, it's not a big deal. And I would completely miss the opportunity to validate and affirm their emotions. And I did not help them at all get emotionally unstuck by just helping them be seen, heard, and understood. Because when you help someone be seen, heard, and understood, you also make them feel valuable. Because when someone feels seen, heard, and understood, they will feel valuable. And you think about it, that's a powerful, powerful gift because I I do love doing this in the workshops, working with leaders and executives. I love asking this question. When is the last time someone made you feel seen, heard, understood, and valuable? And I can't tell you how many times I've asked that question. 99% so far, my, my little personal research project here, 99% don't remember the last time someone made them feel seen, heard, understood, and valued. So it is a significant emotional event if you can develop the skills, the habit, the awareness to validate and affirm somebody else's emotions. And check this out. That doesn't mean that you have to agree with their emotions. It just means you have to validate and affirm them. You don't have to agree with them, but you validate and affirm them. And when you validate and affirm their emotions, 
it will it will it will allow those emotions to get unstuck and keep moving e motion e motion energy and motion it will help that those emotions keep moving because you you recognize them you acknowledge them you affirm them you validated them that keeps those emotions going they dissipate and now that person can that will help that person get emotionally unstuck try it out let's see if 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 we can all get better at giving people that gift of being seen heard understood and valued